Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to British Blizzard's Ain't Got Nothing on America. I know for sure this is true, but it has been cold in the UK the last week. I'm going to be honest, it's been freezing. It's been minus, which is quite rare in the UK. I mean, it's only usually minus in the winter for about... I mean, I can't actually say I've got any facts on this, but I'd say like two weeks in the winter. Um, it was cold and... I mean, yeah, for, for me, that's cold. But I know in the US and Canada, I think, it was fucking freezing. Wasn't it like minus 40 or something in certain parts of Canada? I don't know if it was parts where people live. I assume it must have been where some people live. But mental, just mental to even think about. I couldn't, like, like now f seeing how it feels in minus 2 or minus 3 or minus 4, I couldn't bear, <laughs> I couldn't bear to, like, bear. I just couldn't even begin to imagine how cold it must be at like a minus 15 let alone a minus 40 or whatever it was um i know that's not really a blizzard a blizzard is more so like a storm right which do you even get blizzards in the uk maybe once every like four or years or five years but i can't say i remember there being a blizzard there wasn't there's not been any snow in the uk this year where i live right now so i've not experienced any snow whatsoever so yeah, I think a blizzard's like a snowstorm. That's sort of what I think of when it's a blizzard. But yeah, I can't remember the last time I've seen a snowstorm. Maybe like four years ago, probably. Since I've lived in this apartment, I don't think I've seen one. And I've lived here for over three years now. So yeah, we're going to check this out. I know in the US it gets crazy. Like certain parts get hit differently. So we're going to check this out. I mean, I guess let me know in the comments, have any of you gone through blizzards this winter? I assume a lot of you in the northern parts of the US definitely will have. Um... And I know it gets to the point where in the US where it's actually like dangerous and like scary, like you know. So yeah, let me know in the comments how you're doing, how you're getting through this winter, and yeah, let's check this out. Well, it's that time of year again when America becomes a desolate hellscape. And as of five minutes ago, my weather alerts are saying that there's a blizzard heading straight for Chicago. Wait, no, five hours ago. Oh. Well, back when I lived in Britain, a blizzard was a bit like the census. You only had to worry about it once every 10 years. In Chicago, I'm already on my fourth blizzard in eight, and that excludes trips to Dairy Queen. I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond, and one of those memos pertains to buzzards. Blizzards. <laughs> And since you are likely snowed in yourself, why not begin your new binge? If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, do that now. In the meantime, allow me to give you insight into North American blizzards while simulating one. It's the best I could do at such short notice. The truth is, while Pinball winters are blizzard. generally getting less severe in the Windy City, I still consider blizzards a staple of Midwestern winters. It's perhaps fitting then that the very word blizzard skyrocketed in use following one particular Midwestern season. The hard winter of 1880 to 1881. And if you think I'm being hyperbolic, that's literally what the event identifies as on Wikipedia. Basically, the Great hey, Plains, which the Census Bureau somehow defines as Midwestern, endured a winter storm that continued on and off for six months. I bet Laura Ingalls Wilder's parents were like, I hope you're taking notes. And she was. The storm was so bad that Wilder recalled it 60 years later in her book The Long Winter. But whether it was long or hard, it was extremely cold, to the extent that none of the men felt comfortable making sex jokes out of this sentence. Sections of the Transcontinental Railroad were completely buried. What the hell? What? Look how high it is. Oh my god. That is wild to me. <laughs> what the fuck am I seeing? I have gone forward. Oh, I have. Even Francis Bourgeois would have been mad about that. As Wilder herself wrote in The Long Winter. Railroads, they're good to have, but the trouble is folks get to depend on them. Some more than others. Many set up their lives within reach of the railroad in order to receive critical shipments. During the hard winter, those very often never came. Clearly, in 2024, blizzards aren't the same problem they once were. Especially since I have central heating and a Prius. But as somebody who grew up in the Seattle of Europe, Midwestern blizzards are still a shock to the system. Firstly, they bring a lot of snow in a very short space of time. Secondly, you receive weather alerts that are so poorly formatted it looks like the storm hit them. And after reading it for the seventh time, I managed to glean the following information. Number one, there will be heavy snow. I think we got that memo. Number two, travel could be very difficult to impossible. Which is all good and well to note while sipping coffee in the comfort of 
be on new studio. So when you have a snowstorm, I guess you have to be like, you have to prepare, right? So food, you have to like store loads of food, like a week's worth of food, maybe more. I don't know how, like, how long maybe you necessarily know if you're going to be snowed in or not. But they just say, would you buy like a week's worth of food just to prepare? I guess there are people that prepare all year round because certain regions in the US are just more prone to get hit by snowstorms and all this kind of stuff. But it's a wild thing to have to prepare for. Like, obviously, in the south of the US, people prepare for tornadoes and hurricane season and all this stuff. In the north, it's the winter. You've got to prepare for, like, snowstorms, I assume. That's, like, sort of the comparable difference between certain parts of the US. But these are things that I couldn't ever imagine having to worry about, like... Flooding, like flooding, does happen in the UK, right? There's certain parts that do get flooded, but I've never experienced that because I guess where I live just isn't a place that's prone to that. But yeah, so I don't really have to prepare for any sort of weather things at all, which is kind of a blessing to be honest, because it's just stuff like it's just extra stuff you have to deal with along with daily life, you know. So I mean, it must be rough out there, but I guess people are used to this, these kinds of things now, so. Less so when your home is a hundred miles away and you're sitting in the passenger seat of a Prius. But that is what happened to me and my wife in northern Indiana exactly a few years ago approximately. We had taken a once in a lifetime vacation to the bountiful kingdom of Indianapolis. By then <laughs> nothing more than a snow covered dystopia. After our stay came and went we braved the snow, still relatively light at this point and headed back to Chicago. All seemed to be going well until we pulled into a McDonald's which is where my problems always seem to start. And as I bit into my filet fish something didn't feel right and I'm not just talking about the Bones. A poorly formatted alert entered my inbox bearing the words travel could be very difficult to impossible. And at that very moment, almost as if I'd embellished the timing of it to move the story along, the snow went completely and utterly a little bit silly. The cars in front became invisible, which between that and the slippery roads probably accounted for several accidents. Thankfully, we were not among them. As traffic slowed down to a crawl, or in some cases a slide, we found ourselves having to make a decision. Press on to Chicago knowing we wouldn't be home until June or pull over and wait out the storm at Denny's. We did the latter even if our server Debbie wasn't happy that I'd snuck in McNuggets. One hour and 1246 calories later the snow halted and we slowly made our way home. Until today I'd not told anybody that story except for Debbie who offered her sympathies in no way whatsoever. Wind oh, of course, there we snow go. Isn't even the Wind in cold weather different. It's like you're getting stabbed. It's like you're getting like pinched non-stop. It's, I mean, wind in general. I hate wind, but in the cold, like freezing cold, no thank worst you. Worst part of a blizzard. The worst part about blizzards is the use of the word snowmageddon by American news anchors. But it's also the wind. Because something that I didn't tell you about today's poorly formatted weather alert is that it predicted that the wind would reach 45 miles per hour. Jesus. Whether or not this was accurate doesn't matter because once the winds exceed 25, your face begins to hate you. Between the snow, the wind, and concerned calls from my Aunt Cynthia, it's easy to forget the most exciting part, the degree to which the snow settles. And when I say most exciting part, I'm really paraphrasing my dog Arthur, who is under the mistaken belief that all of this is the greatest thing that has ever happened. What he doesn't know is that it's us humans who have to deal with the fallout. Whether it's shoveling off the balcony over concerns it may collapse into the mudroom below. I've just realised that I've been dropping all of this snow onto our outdoor grill. Or remembering the exact location of ankle-breaking potholes that this adorable little f created or figuring out a plan for when all of this melts because something that i forgot to mention about the hard winter of 1881 is that much like the trains it came to a grinding halt spring very suddenly brought about warm temperatures and the people most affected by the blizzards oh. now had to contend with widespread flooding so wow just so wait so like it went from freezing cold to instantaneously warm to the point where this this it was just like flooding every like everything what the f that's wild to think about that is crazy but sunday isn't unseasonably warm otherwise my basement might leak a little bit 
I have good news and bad news. The good news is my basement's fine. The bad news is my basement is fine because it is minus 9 degrees Fahrenheit outside. For context, that's 9 degrees more frigid than London's coldest ever temperature. In Chicago, this is known as an annual tradition. And that brings me on to my own annual tradition, which is to tell my audience that despite everything, I'm going to embrace winter this year. Well, that ends today. No more toxic positivity, no more isn't snow fun. I've had it. Instead, I'm going to embrace misery. Cold, hard misery. Thanks for watching. No, I'm being told that we can't finish with that. Back to Lawrence in the audio booth. Thanks, Lawrence. Now, January might be the Satan of calendar months, but if those who experienced the hard winter of 1881 were still alive today, it would be a miracle because nobody lives that long. But if they were, they'd probably marvel at how far we've come in weather preparedness and how we in the 21st century take for granted electricity and heating systems because we've never known anything Thanks. different. And how the American office should have finished after Michael left. I mean, that's got nothing to do with this, but they would think that. Anyway, for the first Wait, time... Wait, they continued the, the US office... After Michael Scott left, he's like the main guy. Wait, okay, I, I'm, I do reactions to that, so I'm probably gonna get to that at one point. Um, I crazy. I'm in as many days. I'm sitting here in my basement, hiding from sub-zero temperatures. If you are doing the same thing or happen to be impacted by the big freeze, I raise an invisible glass to you and hope that we get through this the way that grown humans mm -hmm. should by just being. Sensible and wearing a coat. Thank you again to my patrons who never got to That's see so... me on this week's secret live stream because the big freeze hit my internet connection. However, if you would like to become a patron or a ponderer of Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond or by clicking the join button below. Until the next video, goodbye. Oh, little skipperoony, come on. Um after living in northern Minnesota for 30 years, I can say without a doubt I would rather have a blizzard of minus 40 wind chills over an ice storm any day. God damn. I would rather have neither, thank you very much. The most depressing Laura Ingalls Wilder book was The Long Winter. They woke with ice above them and spent all day twisting hay into logs to burn. They were without Pa, who was working to free the trains and were almost out of food when supplies finally reached them. I mean, I don't know who Laura Ingalls is, but I guess it's just a story, right? No, thank you. Um, well, there we go. Hopefully, you're keeping safe out there. And yeah, it's just crazy how you really do get hit by these extreme weathers right but let me know in the comments how you're doing if you are experiencing what he was mentioning here i assume some of you will be um but yeah until next time i subscribe and peace